Hello and welcome to the Kane and Gordon Show today's Best Country Mix. And joining me right here today is Jasmine Rose. Jasmine, how are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. Hope everyone's doing good. I'm so happy to hear that. And thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, no, it's honestly, it's my pleasure. So why don't we start by talking a little bit about you and how you got started in music and introducing yourself. Yeah, so my name's, well, Jasmine Rose, and um, I got into music quite young, and I think it's mainly based on my mum, because my mum also was very into all of her music and her drama. So when I showed an interest in it, it was something she very much nurtured. And then as I started to get older, I started like writing my own music and getting very involved in anything that had stuff to do with shows, uh, music, performing. And then a few years ago, I just decided to, you know, take the leap of faith and just start putting my music out there for people to see. And and now we're here now. So. That is fantastic. So if you could do a duet, collaboration, anything like that with anybody in the world, Jasmine, who would you choose and why? Oh, my God. I don't know. That's a really hard question because I think there's different people to choose. Mm -hmm. For different reasons. I mean, if my younger self was talking, mm -hmm. I'd, in a very cheesy way, I'd have to say Ed Sheeran because I fell in love with Ed Sheeran when I was like 10. <laughs> And I've listened to his music ever since but if I could proper go back there's like a few artists like Etta James for example which I'd absolutely love to like sing with but um yeah that's a really hard question to be fair <laughs> that is very very true it's a very hard question for sure so why don't you tell us a little bit about any of your upcoming singles any upcoming projects you'd like to share with us today um, I am working on an album idea. I've been working on it since okay. last year. I love, so I've always loved fairy tales. Sounds very mm -hmm. easy, I know. But I've also, have you ever heard of Grimm's Brothers? Um, sounds familiar, yeah. Yeah, so they, they, they have fairy tales. I'm not sure if a few of theirs were the original fairy tales that then got um, adapted by like Disney mm -hmm. and stuff. I'm not yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. But their fairy tales kind of don't have the happy ending or they have more mm -hmm. of a there's a bit of a darker side to them which I really like the idea of so I've been writing um a little bit of music um based off fairy tales so you've got like mm -hmm. a Cinderella one even just that type of world altogether so I've got like an Alice in Wonderland one the Wizard in Oz, uh, Wizard of mm -hmm. Oz but they're not the very stereotypical the typical, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. life is all great and brilliant so there is like a darker side to it so I have been looking at at that but it's just very much a work in progress at the moment so that is awesome I um have seen different songs that have with a happy ending in the works with a couple people but I've never seen anything with a dark ending so I think that's going to be a hit. I think people are going to like the suspense and they're going to be like, oh, like, you know, kind of know what's what's to happen next in the song. Yeah, I really like, I've always liked um, mm -hmm. when something's presented to you yeah. as like mm -hmm. really pretty and it's like, oh mm -hmm. yeah. And then all of a sudden it just goes like, boom. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's yep. So yeah, I, I am looking forward to it and just really getting involved in the writing and also possibly the filming aspect of all the music videos so it'll be really mm -hmm. cool oh you could do so many different things with that for music videos that's yeah that's the beauty of it I mean I think the hardest part is mm -hmm. trying to fit it all within a smaller budget oh, oh yes because mm -hmm. I understand if you had that. all the money in the world oh my god mm -hmm. you know, it would be great creating everything mm -hmm. so it's more like mm -hmm. to be strategic about creating the end vision but within that certain budget so right right yeah for sure for sure so where do you see yourself in the next couple of years do you have a goal set for yourself I do and I don't I don't want to put okay. a date mm -hmm. I don't want to put like a date and a time as in like in two years mm -hmm. I best be on all the radio stations and you know possibly up on the billboards and the charts and maybe going to award ceremonies because I feel like if you really put a date and a time on them then you can almost mm -hmm. set yourself up for disappointment because things happen for people mm -hmm. at a later age sometimes 
compared to people who've set at a younger age but ideally in the next couple of years I'd love I would love to be heard on the radio <laughs> yeah. and possibly going to awards and working maybe in film television music you know and just really yeah doing it all <laughs> yeah for sure and I agree with you I think it happens at the right time for people and um, sometimes it's when they're younger when they start younger and sometimes it's when they're older it, yeah. it really it's hard to like set a date and time because like exactly I think I agree with you 100% because people don't want to set for disappointment because then they're going to be like oh well what's the point of making new music what's this and, and then they start going into a deep hole yeah. that they're not going to want to do music anymore because they set that actually in time yeah I think that's the biggest reason why so many people fail is because mm -hmm. especially I feel like a lot of the outside world very much looks at these types of careers mm -hmm. you know, the music even art students graphic students actors I feel like a lot of the times the career itself isn't classed as successful until you're like in Hollywood or you are on the radios mm -hmm. and I feel like that then can also mean people set their sets that uh, well their ambitions and their goals so high within such a mm -hmm. short time frame that that's what sets them up for disappointment and that's why people give up and then that's ultimately how they fail because they have given up so it is hard you know to try and like be your own fan basically to not give up but yeah mm -hmm. you have to you sure do, you sure do. So what do you like doing outside of music? Do you have any hobbies, interests, anything like that you like to share? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I like spending a lot of time like out with my mates and stuff. I think over here, maybe different to mm -hmm. America. I think there's a bit more of a drinking culture over here <laughs> where it's a bit more like I live quite close to the beach. So it's quite nice. Like the other week we went down with some paddle boards and we're down mm. at the beach, um, I get to see them out. But I generally do like, I'm not the biggest when it comes to sport, mm. just in regards to exercise <laughs> in general. Mm. But I do enjoy kind of just like being out, just socializing. I like doing the arts and the drama and things. Mm. So that's really what I get up to most of my days. <laughs> What advice would you give someone that might want to start singing, performing, anything like that, but doesn't really know how to get their foot in the door? Doesn't know how to get there. Um, like doesn't know how to start. Doesn't know how to start. Yeah. I think, I think the big, biggest advice I could say is that like trust in yourself, like you as your own person can be your biggest enemy the fear behind it, the fear of what if people don't like this, what if people don't like this, you kind of almost have to tell yourself to shut up <laughs> mm -hmm. and take that leap of faith because there'll always be people who will doubt you, who won't like the music. And then there'll be a side of people that do love the music, who do want to be there, who want to see the journey and want to watch it grow. So the biggest advice is to become your own friend and not your enemy and trust in yourself and just take that leap of faith and then go from there that is honestly so true I agree with you 1000% on that Jasmine yeah <laughs> do you have a message for those who are your fans or anyone that might be listening watching that anything like that I just want to say like I'm really grateful and thankful I remember last year just I know it's you should never like really hone in on all of the the amounts of streams you have or the amounts of followers mm -hmm. but like last year I remember getting so excited that I had like 50 listeners mm -hmm. on Spotify and probably half of them were my family so you know <laughs> um and I'm so grateful now that in a year you know I'm just over like a thousand listeners and a lot of them actually seem to be in America which mm -hmm. is quite lovely because I don't really know anyone in America so these people are choosing to listen to me by choice <laughs> you know rather than because we are family and friends mm -hmm. so I do want to say to like anyone that was with me from the start listening to me like one of my best mates we live together and she had to listen mm -hmm. to me god record for like six months <laughs> be playing it over and over so it's like people who've been with me from the start 
you know, like my mum, my brother, my dad, and just my family. And then people who are joining in now and who are quite new, you know, I have the same love for everyone that just really shows their support. So yeah, just a big thank you to everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, when I saw that your music was out there and I think somebody sent it to me, I forget her name, but um, the person that sent it to me, Rachel, Rachel, um, she sent it to me and I had a very awesome, you did really good with it. I was very in love with your music. So great job there. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. You're so welcome. You're very, very, very welcome. So where can people find you on social media if they want to keep up with what you're up to? Well, I think I'm probably most... I'm probably most active on Instagram and then comes Facebook. So my name on Instagram is Jasmine Rose official and it's the same for Facebook as well. I do have a Twitter, but I won't lie. I'm terrible on Twitter. Um, (laughs) I'm more of one of those stalkers that will read the tweets than Mm -hmm. actually tweet myself. But um, yeah, so social media wise, I've got YouTube as well. All my music Mm -hmm. videos are on my YouTube channel. As I said, Instagram is probably the best place to keep up with what I've got going on, where I'm performing, what what I'm singing, what I'm releasing. So yeah, that's the best bet to find me. (laughs) That is awesome. Well, is there anything that I forgot to mention that you would like to mention, Jasmine? I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I would like to thank Jasmine Rose for taking the time to come on the Kate and Gordon Show today. We really do appreciate your time. And again, thank you for coming on the Kate and Gordon Show today. It's best good, G-Max. Well, thank you very much for having me.